Hello, and welcome to the Soul Shaking Love podcast. I'm your host, Valerie Green from CoachValerieGreen.com, and this podcast is dedicated to bringing you expert teachers to help you feel that mind, body, and spirit connection with yourself and with your true love. And so I'm really excited today to bring you Dr. Diana Kirshner. Hi, Diana. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. And this is just a great topic because so many women come to me saying that they keep attracting the same toxic guy over and over again, and they don't know what they need to do to attract that soulmate love. And that's exactly what all of your work is about. So we're going to talk about the most, the single most important thing you can do to create passionate love. And we'll go over Diana's whole system as well, because she's been helping thousands of women to create successful relationships. Um, and she has quite a track record. So I'll tell you a little bit about Diana before we jump in. Um, so I've been following Diana for years, and I think that her book, Love in 90 Days, Finding Your Own True Love, which is a bestseller, it goes very deep into this process and how to really remove the inner blocks and really learn the skills that you need to have in order to attract uh, secure love. And she also has appeared on Oprah and starred in the Amazon Prime show, Love in 90 Days. And she's coached tens of thousands of women around the world to create that self-confidence and success and really lasting love. And so she also has a free gift at the end, which we're excited to tell you about at the end. So stay tuned. And but of course, we'll start out, Diana, with asking you, what is the single most important thing you can do to create lasting, passionate love? And we'll dive in. Okay, great, great, great. Yes, um, you know, the thing is, if, if you think through um, actually um, love stories and fairy tales and how love occurs, right? There's a dynamic in there that's very, very powerful. And what that dynamic is, is to have what I would call a fairy godmother, <laughs> a fairy godmother. So um, what am I talking about? A fairy godmother is somebody who comes into your life who can actually see how extraordinary you are, how incredible you are, how, you know, you might continue with this metaphor of uh, Cinderella, right? Cinderella met her fairy godmother and the fairy godmother saw how beautiful she was and her beautiful soul and her spirit and her heart and how beautiful she really was, right? And so Cinderella really helped, uh, was, was helped by her fairy godmother to, you know, become uh, the very best self she could be, to blossom, to really yeah. blossom. And in life, there are actual fairy godmothers. Oh, wow. <laughs> For real. <laughs> For real. <laughs> and these are people who come to know how amazing you are, who Aww. can totally um, give you the kind of coaching and advice and input that help you become what I call your diamond self. Now, I actually you... love that fairy godmother analogy, but yes, continue. <laughs> and and I, of course, I do want to know what is your diamond self? Yes, yes. So the diamond self is this inner amazing being who is you, you know, who is you? Remember, even when you were little, you had this sense of me, right? And has that really mm -hmm. changed? No. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's been changed by all the programming we have on top of it, but I think that's your point, right? Is to, we have to get below that programming and connect to that beauty of our core essence that we knew ourselves to be when we were little before we had the programming, right? Exactly, exactly. At the innermost core is this beautiful light that is you. And it yeah. has never changed from the time you're three to the time you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 90. You know, it, it doesn't even matter, right? That's but we beautiful. do get, mm -hmm. just as you said, Valerie, we get hurt, we get burnt, we people leave us, they betray us. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our upbringing often is not the best. <laughs> And right. So, and as you know, it doesn't like what I tell people, it doesn't matter whether your upbringing is, was the best or not. What matters is what you made it mean. And those exactly. are your yes, we're very much interpretations. And, then, machines, and what yeah. we tend to make it mean is not good stuff. What we tend to make right. it mean is I'm not lovable. 
you know, I'm, uh, I'm fat, I'm, uh, I'm old, whatever we take away, you know, we have these interactions, let's say we're, exactly. in, a dating, we're in a relationship and the person really betrays you or disappears on you or dumps you. Um, we start making these awful meanings about exactly it. exactly and that's our programming and that does have to do with our how we were treated when we were little i don't want to minimize that if we had an abusive childhood of course we're going to create these limiting beliefs it's just that i also encounter a lot of clients you probably do too who are like i had a great childhood and my parents treated me wonderfully and one day their parents could have been sick and not taking care of them and then they could have created a limiting belief and it's not your fault that you created yeah. these right it's like it ha just happens but then mm -hmm. it is our responsibility to take a look at what is my programming and how can I reconnect to my core essence of the beauty that I really am is what I hear mm -hmm. you say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, and the single most important thing you can do is have somebody who recognizes that, that essence, who recognizes that essence in you and and believes in you 100%. And this is particularly important if you've been coming out of a relationship, let's say with a narcissist, an alcoholic, mm -hmm. or someone mm -hmm. who's cheated on you, where, um, you know, what that is guaranteed to do is kind of move you to the position of um, self-doubt, a lot of self-doubt. And exactly. sometimes even self-hate, depending on what happened. Um, and mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, you know, when a person comes into a relationship like that with a fairy godmother, uh, the sky's the limit, right? Yeah. And in particular, the, the really good fairy godmothers, they really know the road to love. They really, really do. They really do. And, um, you know, and it can be someone in your network, right? You know, a good aunt. It could be uh, somebody who is uh, in your church. Uh, it could be someone floating around who has a kind of love relationship you want, who thinks very highly of you, is fond of you, you know, that kind of thing, wants to give to you, that kind of thing. Um, or it can be a professional, right? If there's nobody in your, in your uh, network, uh, a professional coach can be like a great fairy godmother, professional dating uh, coach. Right, exactly. And um, so what I'm hearing you say, which I think is brilliant, is that um, I like to tell my clients that the wounds that are created in relationship can only be healed in relationship. Yes. So succinct. <laughs> exactly. Is, that is it. Exactly. You know, most of the time we're trying to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't be this upset. You know, well, he left and I'm on the couch crying, you know, with the Ben and Jerry's ice cream and I'm just going to get it, get over it. Right. Right. And right. And there's some value to that, but it's very difficult to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. It's just so difficult when I agree. you have somebody mm -hmm. come in who um, sees how amazing you are and helps you uh, rise to being in that more of that identity. It's just so much easier. So your whole journey gets shortened. You know, in terms of moving back into self-love and also being able to find partners who are seeing your diamond self. In other words, what we want or what most people want is uh, to have some a partner who sees their diamond self. That's yes, love, right? Yes, yes. That is love. You're seeing yourself and then you're seeing his diamond self and he's seeing his diamond self and then he's also seeing yours, right? Like it's, yes. as we say, all relationships are actually five relationships, right? It's your relationship within yourself and then your relationship with the other person, right? And mm -hmm. then there's the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course. I mean, I I agree and I love what you're saying because um, what I mean by that wounds that happen in relationship can only be healed in relationship is that when you're stuck in the muck it's hard to pull yourself out of it because you're stuck there and it helps as you're saying i completely agree to have a person who knows your beauty on the inside mm -hmm. and can reflect it back to you and if that person is a caring friend if they're somebody who's in your family if they're somebody who has the kind of relationship that you want that you could ask them for advice great and if not, then there's a secure relationship you can create with a professional who you trust that'll shorten the learning curve for you so you don't have to waste years 
beating your head against the wall in your old patterns. And then you can heal the wounds within yourself inside a safe relationship with either a healthy friend or a professional. I agree. And um, Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So my question is, how did that um, work in your own love life? Like who was the fairy godmother for you? Yeah, (laughs) yeah. No, I was born the fifth daughter to an Italian family that only wanted uh, boys. So when I was born, my father didn't come to the hospital to see me. He said, a fifth girl, I want to see her. Oh my um, God. And he only said, I love you once to me, but he was drunk actually at the time. So it didn't mean anything. Oh my um, God. So I used to actually, um, I, I, I would, I would walk in front of the side, in front of the house that I grew up in on the sidewalk and I would be crying because my parents were cursed to have me. Oh my God. That, you must've felt so unwanted. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so when I started dating, uh, it was a mess. In other words, I would take any crumb a man would give me. I kept picking the ones that were mean to me. Sure. You know, you name it. Uh, mm-hmm. And so what happened was I wound up having a fairy godmother who came into my life. <laughs> it was a man, not a woman, but it was <laughs> a man. And he said, you know, it was nothing romantic or anything like that. He was uh, my coach. And um And he said, you know, you're incredible. He said all the things that you need to hear, right? Because he was seeing my diamond self. You're incredible. You're smart. You're beautiful. Um, He actually said you'll become a very well-known psychologist, which I thought he was insane at that time. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Which all came to pass. Yeah, he really saw you on a deep level. He helped me be in the most extraordinary love relationship which is insane. There's no way I could have been in this amazing love relationship with my husband now. We've been married for decades, right? No way. No way yeah, that that's I could so have wonderful. been in a relationship without having this fairy godmother, right? So, I mean, I met my husband. He's coaching me how to meet my husband. And then um, my husband was too loving, right? Because I wasn't used to being loved. Right. Uh, okay, so this is good. So let's talk about that. How did... Um, the coach that you're working with help you to open yourself up to stretch your comfort zone to receive the love that your now husband was giving you? Yeah. Well, of course I said to my coach, I said, uh, I'm just not turned on by him. He's too nice. And, you know, he wants to take me on these trips. He's buying me all these things. He thinks I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yes. (laughs) And I'm like, forget and it. It wasn't, it wasn't like you, and this is important, right? Like I, you weren't able to be attracted because it didn't match your programming. Exactly. It was not my programming. I was raised with a father who literally called me a piece of shit. You're yeah. my piece of shit. Wow. And, wow. Um, I mean, and, your story uh, is so very inspiring. Abusive, very abusive cause... father. And, um, and this was the opposite experience, right? And right. I, I could, I could barely tolerate this man who became my husband loving me. I mean, because it was just felt so foreign and weird. Yes. um, I mean, your story is inspiring, I think, to a lot of women because I coach a lot of women who ask me, how am I going to be attracted to these nice guys? Because I'm only attracted to the bad boys. And it's it's in redoing your programming and the way that you're describing is learning how to take in the love with the support of your fairy god mother father whatever you want to call your coach um and then he was like how did he allow how did he help you to slowly open your comfort zone around that well first of all he said which was brilliant i mean really brilliant he said stay with stay in this relationship and see what happens for me he asked me to do it as a favor to him now ah. i was at that time i did not have enough self love that i would have stayed in it for me Wow. But I stayed in it for him. <laughs> he knew how to influence you. That's smart. Yeah. No, he got my number. He really got my number, you know, and, and he had been so great with me, you know, and I just wanted to give back to him. And I'm like, this is never going to work. I'm not turned on. He's not the right person. He's too much. Oh my God. He's too crazy about me. That's horrible. And so, <laughs> I stayed. And so my coach said, take take your boyfriend shopping and give him a makeover so i took 
my husband, my now husband, shopping, and all of a sudden I put him, I got him to be in some tight jeans and a really sexy shirt. <laughs> Then the other women started noticing him. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and um, here's that jump exam up a little. The, you know, the the rest is really history. I mean, I couldn't be happier with this man. I mean, I couldn't yes. be happier with this man. We have an amazing relationship, just amazing. And it actually, believe it or not, Valerie, it gets better over time. You know, people in my interviews, they say, how come you're so happy? <laughs> <laughs> well i'll tell I you let myself be happy <laughs> <laughs> when you're with a great you know this man turned out to be a great soulmate love he oh really good he i'm really so pleased did. yeah and when you're with your soulmate and living like that i mean it's just so much fun i can't even tell you you know and 10 percent of the uh of the population actually has this kind of um, very high soulmate relationship, 10%. So it can be done. And if you look at my case, no matter what has happened to you, it can be done. But I, but you see where the key is with the fairy godmother person, right? If I hadn't had a fairy godmother person, I would have dumped him immediately, right? Right, 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 right. Because that's your programming. Yes. Um, and it, it's really important to understand our programming is what kept us safe when we were little. We create these limiting beliefs so that we don't, we're not overwhelmed with the pain of feeling unwanted. And the limiting would belief was like, oh, men are just like this. That's what feels familiar. Yeah. Yeah. And so if men are just like this, you can't accept love from a man who's not like that. It goes against your programming and you were you know, wise enough to take your coach's advice and give it more time so that you can then develop the attraction and redo your programming. So that's such a wonderful story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are many, many women in our coaching program who've had similar results. In other words, they, they don't like the ones that like them. They don't like the nice guys. And so, but they work with a coach and the coach encourages them to just hang in there, just see what can evolve see what can manifest. And lo and behold, they're married a year later and, and happy over the moon. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Although sometimes, I mean, it's not that simple, right? Just like sometimes we meet a guy who is nice, but we give it a chance and there still isn't an attraction, right? Because yeah. there's other things that have to be there. So um, I'd love to hear your take on what else people need to do. To well, there are, find three, love and, yes. there are three criteria in terms of selecting somebody, right? One is, is he crazy about me? We don't want the ones that are not crazy about you. We want the ones that actually view your diamond self and they see you in your diamond self manifestation. Yes, they see I love how funny, that. quirky, wonderful, incredible you are, or how smart you are, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And how loving you are. Number two is they have to be willing to grow because there's no perfect mm, man. There's absolutely no perfect man. Love but if he's that. Willing, yeah. If he's willing to grow, he could become amazing. Like my husband, right? He was willing to have me give him a makeover. He was totally willing to grow. At one point, he, he was uh, seeing my coach. He, he came in to talk about how to make the relationship work. He was willing to grow. And when you have that, you can have basically an almost perfect partner because they'll stretch with you and for you right exactly i love what you're saying and mm -hmm. it's absolutely true i think the most important criteria in a partner besides that he's crazy about you is that he wants he's willing to grow yes because yeah. that's I, you know what's really interesting like my parents actually i mean they were married they stayed married until my dad passed and they had a lot of good advice actually about relationships and one of the things my dad told me when i was little that i still take to heart is relationships don't stay stagnant they're yeah. always either moving closer together or farther apart there is no status quo and in order to keep moving closer over time you need to be willing to grow because people change and you have to be willing to grow together in a harmonious way and that takes work and a man has to demonstrate to you that he's willing to grow in the beginning in order to grow closer together instead of farther apart. Exactly, Valerie. Exactly, exactly. And the third criterion is 
that he's meeting the soulmate basics. Now, what does that mean? He speaks your language. He's in the, usually it works out better if he's in the same socioeconomic group as you because you have a lot more in common. He has, he shares your values. He, sh he shares your vision for what he wants to create, you know? Yep. And there's some chemistry, some. It may not be apparent initially, right? But there's some chemistry that, can be built on. So if the person's willing to grow and there's some chemistry, they will grow into a great lover with you. They'll grow into satisfying all your needs with you, right? Sex exactly. Isn't a, sex isn't a one and done that you suddenly, you know, I mean, you know, you have sex and it's great, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, you, that can happen, but over time, in other words, you have to really teach each other how to keep that sexual uh, attraction going and how to make the sex great continuously right exactly yeah and now that's all about being willing to grow exactly yeah the willingness agree. to grow so if there's some chemistry you know yeah. the person's going to become an amazing lover for you right right yeah but if there's if it starts lover. out with chemistry and then you're willing to grow together then that's a recipe yeah. for success exactly yeah yeah <laughs> So it's pretty exciting, you guys, really exciting. No matter what has happened to you, you guys can create soulmate love like that. You yes, really guys and gals and everyone. Yeah, because I mean, I know most of my audience is women, but I do coach a fair amount of men too. And mm -hmm. it is the same for men in terms of Absolutely. being able to, um, you know, those th three criteria, in my opinion, are the same for men, that you're the, the woman sees your diamond self too. Yes. Um, and that she's willing to grow and that there's chemistry. I, I agree. I think that the, uh, yes, of course, I'm sure we both teach about masculine and feminine energy and there's distinctions that are different for men and women, but I, I want to affirm that all these same things are true for men too, even though our audiences Absolutely. are women. Absolutely. <laughs> when I developed this work, I was running a clinic with, uh, we had uh, hundreds and hundreds of clients there and, um, you know, we, we developed it with men and women, really. Uh, yeah. And with all genders, I mean, I don't yeah, know, yeah. you know, but and it's like, it's all yeah. the same. Yeah. It's the same. I mean, you know, often uh, men like to be a little bit more proactive in things, et cetera, et cetera, which is some, you know, another variable in terms of the masculine and feminine dance. Uh, but those three things. Yeah, you know, no, I agree. It's with somebody who's not crazy about them. It's not going to work. I agree. It doesn't matter how feminine or masculine you're going to be. If the other person's not crazy about you, then it's, there's not a spark. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, at least, if there's not an attraction, and of course, you can build it. Um, and we can do a whole nother interview about how you can build attraction, you know, if it's only a little bit at first. Um, but this is just, of course, we're, we're running out of time here, so I want to know, um, what do you think are the three things that singles can do today to increase their chances of getting into a great relationship? Today, yes, <laughs> okay. Well, today, uh, what I would say is, uh, number one, there's a lot of people to meet in real life, right? So uh, make sure you smile and make eye contact and say hello to the people around you, actually both men and women, because you never know who could introduce you to a partner. Uh, maybe we had one woman in our um, uh, coaching program, she met her husband, she was riding her bike along the beach, her bike broke and the man helped her. And the rest is history. He's very happily married. So there's in real life, and you want to be the change you want to see. You want to be loving, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And affirming to people around you. You make eye contact and say hello, which is very, very important. Um, also, uh, make sure you're on uh, one large dating site and one boutique site. So it might be Match and um, JD, you know. Uh, Bumble and uh, Plenty of Fish or something like that. Make sure you're on two, two of them. It takes, you know, takes two. You, you really, it's a numbers game. The online thing is a real numbers game. And uh, number three, take advantage of my gift today. <laughs> getting a fairy godmother of oh, your are so fun for free. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And so tell us more about that. Um, I, I love the generous gift that you're offering because I know you don't, um, always have time to offer your time to people. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have an amazing team of basically their fairy godmother coaches. <laughs> They've been trained by me. They're extraordinary. They're extraordinary. In fact, I used one to coach me when I made my um, show. I did a show on PBS originally. 
<laughs> I used one to go to me in the green room and it came out great. It really did. But they're amazing. They're amazing. That's cool. They're amazing. I'll have to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it wound up on the Amazon on the Amazon Prime. Love I it know. Now. I haven't watched it yet. Um, yeah. I've definitely I've checked out your book, but I haven't watched that. So yeah, yeah. I will definitely. Yeah. And three and I encourage just, others to watch it to check it out. Yeah. And three people in just a studio audience got married who were just in that little two hundred. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like, did you have people do extras? Like, did you give them chances to connect during the breaks? Or well, no, it was not connecting them. I did the diamond self exercise i did some experiential stuff with them and they got so inspired you know what i'm saying right. so and that was very cool. connected that's great <laughs> that's right so um yeah so you guys the great news is that you guys can have a gift session with with one of my coaches um and you can talk about anything you want to talk about anything your diamond self you know manifestation or feeling unconfident or you know, helping uh, to get a commitment from somebody you really care about. That's wonderful. Um, so all you need to do is go to lovein90days.com. That's lovein90days.com. Click on the coaching tab. Now, here's the important part. When you fill out the form, you have to say, Valerie sent me. Say, Valerie sent me. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being is that we sometimes have to turn people away. But if you say, Valerie sent me, uh, you will definitely have your session. I guarantee it. Oh, and, that's very um, generous of you. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're a VIP, you're Valerie's VIPs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. And that's why I do this podcast because I love to be able to share gifts with my audience, both um, of your generous offer of your time, but then also of your um, philosophy, because obviously I teach my take and you teach your take and I want people to know about your diamond self philosophy and how you help people be your, their fairy godmother and what that really means and that we don't have to do it alone. And I think that um, the tools and distinctions that you've shared around how to allow yourself to be supported and redoing your programming so that you get out of your own way and really get the support you need to be your best self and get out there and meet somebody who actually is crazy about you in a way that you deserve. I think that that has just been really inspiring and I'm leaving this interview feeling more wow. inspired that, you know, I mean, I'm already happy, happily married, of course, but um, when I coach people, I attract a lot of women too that are like, there's no good guys out there. And we both know there are plenty of good guys out there if we just, you know, have a, a good strategy. Absolutely. And, and they're coming, new ones are coming on the market all the time from divorce, you know, death of the wife, that kind of thing. New ones are coming all the yeah, time. Yeah, or you men that You don't want to really... shut yourself up, out, you know, and say, oh, there's nobody. You or really men that were in it. a relationship that what they weren't married, but they just broke up because she wasn't the right woman for him. And maybe you are, or yeah. maybe they've been focusing on their career. So they haven't been dating and now they are like, there's new men coming into the dating scene all the time. And it's always advantageous if you're single, first of all, to do the inner work, right. To know your diamond self and to be living true to your own values. Right. And then being supported and having a strategy to attract the right man who's going to see your diamond self. Yeah, absolutely. And have that soulmate love. I completely agree. And I, I feel inspired that every man, woman, and, you know, all genders can attract their um, soulmate love if they choose to believe in themselves and believe that it's possible and then take the actions that are strategic. Absolutely. Absolutely. So definitely get yourself a fairy godmother. You're going to put the link underneath the, uh, the video. Yes. Yes. So I will, um, I will put the link that's love in 90 days.com, uh, forward slash dating dash coach, but I will put that in the show notes and I'll put that, um, if you're listening to the podcast, it'll be in the show notes. If you're watching this video, uh, on YouTube, then I'll put it in the description. So just click to show more and you'll see all of it in the description. I'll put Diana's free gift. I'll also put her website, you know, just her general website. And, um, I'll also put a link to her book just cause I think everyone should have that, you know, if you want to check out her book and, um, then, you know, if you resonate even more with your philosophy, I encourage you to reach out and get the support because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. You definitely deserve it. Yeah. No and if if you've it. had 
challenges on your own, then maybe you just need somebody to reflect back to you your brilliant beauty and radiance, you know, and because it's in there and you deserve to see it. I love it. Yes, 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 yes. So thank you. And that's the note that we can leave on is that everybody deserves to connect to their brilliance. And on that note, I hope you have a brilliant day.